and welcome to day one of Vlogmas 2023. I cannot believe it's here. I'm delighted it's here. I'm delighted it's back. Vlogmas, if you've not experienced Vlogmas before, is a period of time set in December whereby I will be putting up a video every day all the way up until Christmas Eve. Now these videos will have a Christmassy vibe, that's why I've got the old uh, Christmas tree in the background, uh, because Christmas is my bag. Christmas is my personality, really. Um, so there's gonna be lots and lots of lovely Christmassy content throughout the month of December. Christmassy vlogs, taste tests, a Christmas gift guide, um, some Christmas reading vlogs. Today's video, we're kicking off Vlogmas as we always do with my TBR for the month. Um, so these are the books that I plan on reading in December. December. I've got a ma massive, massive pile of Christmas books here to read this this month in December. Um, and there's, I think there's 37 books, which is never really gonna, I mean, th that's more days than there are books. But there's some little books in here and there's some books I'm maybe gonna have a little look at and maybe not read the whole thing of. Um, but yeah, I put them in, I put them in piles. We'll start with the library books. Um, and the two books that I've got out from the library are first of all, we've got Ali Bunbury's All Wrapped Up. Um, it says here, it's the time of year to run away from your life. You may find, if you haven't been around here for Vlogmas before, that I'm picking up books that I wouldn't ordinarily read in the rest of the year. I don't really read romance, I don't really read women's contemporary fiction. But come December, I'm all about it. I'm all about it because it's set at Christmas and it just feels a bit different. So let's have a look. So it says, Holly is looking for an escape from the trappings of Christmas, her least favourite time of year, and from the fallout of her decision to call off her wedding six weeks before the big day. <clears throat> I remember why I wanted this. It's because it's set in Ireland. A job decluttering a remote country house back in Ireland seems like the answer to her prayers. But when Holly arrives at Knock Bowden, it's in a far worse state than she expected and there's no money available to carry out glamorous owner Serena's very big and very unrealistic renovation plans. Just when Holly is tempted to run away again, Serena gets a phone call that looks set to change the fate of Knock Bowden, so she'll need Holly to make it happen. So as the countdown to Christmas begins, Holly ignores the interference of Serena's handsome but moody son and works hard to help save the Harper family home. And the most wonderful time of the year, nothing can go wrong, right? The first book. Hopefully you'll find something in amongst all of these books that you may well want to read before Christmas. Then I've got Only on the Holidays by Abiola Bello. I've read another um, Christmas book, that's that one falling over, by Abiola Bello last year, which I feel like was set in a Christmas book shop. There's no list of stuff here of what, but yeah, I've read another one and I'm sure it was set in Winter Wonderland, I think it was called, or Love in Winter Wonderland. But yeah, this is called Only for the Holidays. So it says here, a winter ball, two single strangers, the perfect foemance. Hmm. Uh, City girl Tia is on a break with her boyfriend. The last thing she wants is to spend two weeks in the countryside. Country boy Quincy and his family run the Cy Young Hedge Farm. This year they're hosting the town's winter's ball. Tia and Quincy don't see eye to eye until they realise that they both have something to gain from feigning a relationship. But is, their but is their romance only for the holidays or will real feelings get in the way? An enemies to lover, fake dating romance with the promise of a sweet happy ever after. Enemies to lovers, that's quite the big, that's quite the big moment now isn't it? There's a lot of enemies to lovers stuff going on. Right, okay, so those were those. Then let's move on to a few children's books. So I will be reading, as I always do, The Jolly Christmas Postman. David and I read this aloud to each other on Christmas Eve because we're adorable. Um, the Jolly Christmas Postman is a lovely book and I would highly recommend it as a gift um, for somebody for Christmas, children and adults alike. Um, it's a lovely poem by Janet and Alan Allberg about the Jolly Christmas Postman, and then throughout this, I'm t telling you about this, but I mean, this is a big thing in the UK. Um, throughout, they have little envelopes um, which have little items in it. So this first one is a Christmas card. So these are items that uh, the Jolly Christmas Postman is delivering, and this is, um, uh, I can't remember who it's from. Well, it's two baby bear and her brother from Goldilocks. Um, and there's lots and lots of bits throughout. It's just lovely and yeah, we take it in turns every year. One of us reads the poem, one of us reads what's in the what's in the envelope. So that's lovely and adorable. Um, and then last year I was sent from my wish list, Cat Family Christmas, a lift the flap adventure book. It's got over 140 flaps. Um, it's written by Lucy Brownridge and it's illustrated by E. Young Seo. Um, and yeah, it's just lovely and adorable cat stuff with lots and lots of lift the flaps that have little mice and stuff underneath it. I had a little look at this with my niece last year, but I was so frightened she was gonna rip a flap off. She might be a bit older and a bit more trusting this year, but yeah, it works through the 12 days of Christmas. It's just really, really cozy vibes and just lovely to sort of sit down for of an evening and just enjoy. So I will be reading that. Um, and then two that I've been sent from my wish list this year, 
This first one, I'm so excited about. This is Have Yourself a Horrible Christmas by Terry Deary and illustrated by Martin Brown. I used to love horrible histories when I was younger. In fact, I can't believe, I mean, they're a real big thing. Like a lot of the stuff, so I had a vile Victorians book and an Egyptian book, but I can't remember the word that was pro like preceding Egyptians. But yeah, here in the UK, I don't know if it's spread elsewhere, but this is where I learned a lot of my history. I wasn't really ever that interested in history, but I had a couple of horrible history books which tell the sort of like really gutty bits of history um, and make it appealable to children. So there's a lot in there about poo and blood and beheading and all of this sort of stuff. Um, and it's told really hilariously. Now, this has gone on from being books. It's now a massive TV series that's for children and everything. And yeah, I um, when I saw there was a Christmas book, I was like, amazing so this is full of foul festive facts crackers jokes silly songs and ghastly games and i think it's just going to be really good fun to sort of sit down sick song or of course you could sing anti-christmas songs like this american hit written in 1977 by randy brooks grandma got run over by a reindeer and then all of this lovely stuff christmas history christmas crackers yeah i think it's going to be really really good fun and like good bits about history but told in an amazing way um and then i've also got the christmas department store i've read this once already this year um i read it aloud to my niece when she was around for my birthday but i will be reading it again in december because it's adorable by maldi uh maldi powtuck and huang jiang um a lovely lovely book about giving gifts at christmas it's the illustrations are beautiful so there we go. So those are the ch the children's books I will be reading. Pop those up there. Uh, next up, let's go on to poetry. Um, so I've got uh, Brian Bilston's And So This Is Christmas, 51 ad seasonally adjusted poems. This is new out this year. Very, very excited. And lots of like new stuff and like riffs on poetry and yeah lots of things like lots of word play and like how, how the words are set on the page um <laughs> here we go here's a very some very short some longer this one is a haiku in praise of the 12th of december i love christmas eve 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 just quite funny and fun and i'm looking forward to it one of my things that i was thinking of doing is where i had such a lovely time every evening when i was doing my walking challenge um walk in of an evening and chatting with you guys i was thinking of maybe just nipping on instagram live um of an evening just having a little chat about christmas and reading a christmas poem not necessarily from this book i've got quite a few christmas poem books um but yeah should I do that? If you think, I mean, you'll be watching this on the first. If you think that's a good idea, let me know because I may well start it that evening. Then, the Christmas poem, po poet, poem, um, is Carol Ann Duffy. Um, Carol Ann Duffy writes a little Christmassy poem every single year and brings them out in these adorable little hard, uh, tiny little mini hardbacks. Um, and I love them so much. Um, but recently, uh, well, not last year, the year before, maybe even the year before that, it was during uh, COVID, um, this sort of anthology of Carol and Duffy's Christmas poems was brought out. So I got rid of all my little ones. Oh, I don't think I got rid of them. Maybe I've given them to my sister. And um, they're all here in this book. Uh, my favourite one is Another Night Before Christmas. It's, all of them are illustrated by different illustrators. This one in particular is illustrated by Rob Ryan. But since this book came out, uh, two more have come out. So last year, Advent Street by Carolyn Duffy came out and this year Christmas Eve at the Moon Underwater illustrated by Margot Carpentier came out so yeah I'll definitely be visiting these throughout the month um, and then the newer ones that aren't in the anthology but yeah absolutely love them so much there are other ones I could read on if I was going to do the old reading uh, then I've got something a bit, little bit special which doesn't really fit into a category so this is Christmas with Maud Lewis uh, by Lance Woolaver and Bob Brooks so Maud Lewis is one of my favourite uh, illustrator painters um, she is a Canadian woman um, and I love her snow scenes and the way she paints and I love the way she does cats because I think they look like my cat my old cat, Minnie. So her illustrations, this is about her life. I, David's mum got me this for Christmas, which is just amazing because I didn't even know that she knew that I liked Maud Lewis. So there we go. Like, just, she's just so thoughtful. So these are the sort of things, these are the sort of artist scenes that Maud Lewis does. Let me see if I can find you a cat so I can show you how much they look like Minnie. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Don't they look like Minnie? So yeah, this is all about Maud's life. So yeah, she's one of Canada's favourite folk artists and her buoyant winter picture of nature pets farm animals and people at work and play are among her most charming her hands were twisted with rheumatoid arthritis but Maud earned her living by painting Christmas cards and pictures and selling them from her tiny gaily painted one-bedroom house beside the highway near Digby Nova Scotia so yeah 
lovely i'm really really looking forward to reading that really really so yeah what a lovely gift to get right well let's have a look at more little bits then so these are a collection of um macmillan um uh, collector's library editions and these are three christmasy ones i've got so i've got poems for christmas again more things that i could potentially read so lots and lots of different stuff lots of stuff by so and also stuff that i would consider hymns that would have originally i guess started as a poem once in royal david city um come on there must be more christmas is coming the goose is getting fat do you remember that a christmas carol a cradle song there we go. So yeah, lots of different bits in there. Um, and then I've also got Round About the Christmas Tree, which is a miscellany, oh, lovely word, of festive stories. I've had this for a few years now. So this is the sort of thing that I'll sort of drop in and out of. They're quite nice to read in the bath because they're quite small. I, I realised I got this far last year and I've actually stopped at A Kidnapped Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. But lots and lots of little Christmassy like stories and stuff in there and then the new one that i've got this year is classic christmas crime stories which is edited by david stewart davis um and there's lots of different bits in here so i imagine i can imagine so murder under the mistletoe by marjorie allingham cambric tea by marjorie bowen they're not all by people called marjorie boxing unclever by robert bernard the blue carbuncle that was the one i was expecting to see in there by arthur conan doyle so yeah, there we go. Another little little book. Like I said, good to sort of like have in your handbag or to uh, read in the bath. Um, from from one set of hardbacks to the next, then we'll end on cookery books, and then I've got a big pile of paperbacks here. So. Um, the book that we're reading for Patreon Book Club this year, uh, for Christmas Patreon Book Club, me and David will be reading and discussing The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. So The Appeal was a book that David and I have both read and loved. Um, we read it, David read it in one weekend, which is unheard of for him. Um, and yeah, this is um, a book that sort of like, follows on from that I'm, I'm told you don't have to have read the appeal to enjoy this but this is set uh during a panto um and uh somebody a, a santa is dead a christmas panto a dead santa and everyone's a suspect and it's just like the appeal in that it's told through sort of whatsapp messages and emails and like notes and like interview notes and things like that and if it's half as gripping as the appeal we're in for an absolute treat so yeah i've got really high hopes for this i loved the appeal and then janice hallett's other two books i haven't got on with at all um but i've got really really high hopes that i'm gonna love this hopefully as much as the appeal because if, if i love this as much as i love the appeal and it's set at christmas well, this could bloody be my bestest book of the year. Um, and then I've got a couple more um, hardback copies. So this was sent to me off my, off my wish list a few years ago, and I still haven't read it. This is A Christmas in the Alps by Melanie Carlson. Um, yeah, like I said, sent to me off my wish list a few years ago. So thank you. Oh, I've just seen who it was sent from as well. Thank you, that person. One more. Um, Get ready for a magical mountain holiday. After a time of heartache and loss, Simone Winthrop discovers a tantalising letter from her French great-grandmother, which seems to suggest that Simone is an heir to a family treasure. Ever practical, Simone assumes the claim is baseless, but her best friend encourages her to find out for sure. Despite her deep-rooted fear of flying, she boards a jet and travels to Paris at Christmas time to untravel the truth. Un uncover the truth, sorry. During the long flight, Simone meets the charming Kyle Larson, who's on his way to France to become an apprentice clockmaker. Though they abruptly part ways, an unexpected rendezvous in the French Alps at Simone's family clock factory may lead to the discovery of a family treasure and so much more so much clock and romance so yeah there's that one uh, and then this is another one that i've got if for if by anton de beck who is was a dancer on strictly and is now a judge and this is a christmas to remember so i believe he's written these with a sort of ghost writer sort of historical fiction set around well this one set in london in 1938 um sort of romances and things like that this was also sent to me off my um off my wish list um and this is set in a hotel i really enjoy books set in hotels so it says celebrate christmas at the bucket Hotel, London 1938, when fiercely independent chambermaid Nancy Hiccup Nettleton first moved to London. The last thing on her mind was finding love, let alone falling for the debonair dancer Raymond de Guise. As the, fast, uh, as the festive season approaches, life at the exclusive hotel is busier than ever, with guests arriving from around the world seeking comfort, relaxation and refuge as tensions build across Europe and it looks like another war is imminent. Behind the scenes, the staff work tirelessly, ensuring the smooth operation of the hotel and guarding the secrets of their guests, but they have many of their own that, will, that they fear will be revealed. As the band strikes up in the grand ballroom to celebrate Nancy and Raymond's we uh, wedding, one thing is for certain, this will be a Christmas to remember. 
so there we go then i said a big massive pile of hardbacks uh, paperbacks here they all are so we'll start with the one that didn't win the christmas vote for patreon book club but i'm really looking forward to reading this is love like farms by bk borison it's another fomance holiday fomance um, in an effort to save the christmas tree farm she's loved since she was a child stella enters a contest with insta famous influencer evelyn st james with the added pub publicity and the huge cash prize she might just be able to save the farm from its financial woes there's just one problem. To make the farm seem like a romantic destination for the holiday, she lied on the application form and said that she owns Love Light Farms with her boyfriend. Only, there is no boyfriend. Enter best friend Luca Peters. He just came home for some hot chocolate and somehow got a farm and a serious relationship in the process. Will their fake love affair save Love Light Farms in time for Christmas? What do you reckon? I've got a feeling it might. Then we've got one that I bought, I think in March <laughs> this year. This is A Merry Little Meat Cute by Julius Murphy, uh, Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. Um, when B. Hobbs takes the lead in a squeaky clean romantic Christmas movie, there are only three rules. One, don't get involved with anyone on set. Two, don't tell anyone what you do for a living. And three, don't get involved with anyone on set. Three B, seriously. Now she's filming in Christmas Notch, a small town with Christmas trees and festive tunes all year round. But B's got a secret identity to hide and it's not family friendly. And her co-star, Nolan Shaw, an ex-boy band member, infamous, infamous for his own, infamous, sorry, for his own X-rated antics, not only knows it, but is secretly her biggest fan. I think there's quite a lot of shagging in this one. When things start to heat up on set, B and Nolan must keep this steamy affair under wraps or risk ruining everything. Yeah. Christmas in the sexiest way possible. Charming, says Tessa Bailey. Uh, then I've got Christmas at the Palace by Javini Sharika. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, look, that just looks like Downton Abbey and it's sparkly. I remember buying this. I bought this for myself in a garden centre. Snuggle up with this perfect Christmas romance as one ordinary girl learns what it means to love a prince. Not even in her wildest imaginings did Kamari ever think she'd become a princess. But having fallen for Ben, or rather Prince Benedict, sixth in line to the throne, it looks like nothing will ever go as planned again. And as Christmas rapidly approaches, the distinction between family and royalty becomes ever more apparent. With the paparazzi hound in her, her job on the line and some rather frustrating royal training, Kamari feels panic set in. I am rather enamoured with that front cover, you know. So there's that one. Uh, then um, I got bought this from David's mum for Christmas as well, uh, for my birthday. This is Murder on the Christmas Express by Alexander Be Benedict. Um, blurbed here by Janice Hallett, One Killer Christmas Read. Sounds very Murder on the Orient Express. In the early hours of Christmas Eve, the sleeper train to the Highlands is derailed, along with the festive plans of its travellers. But that is only the beginning of their problems. When the body of one of the passengers is discovered in the locked room of our cabin, all the evidence points to murder. With the train stuck in the snow in the middle of nowhere, it's up to former Met detective Ros Parker to find the killer before they strike again. But as, the detect but as the countdown to Christmas and their rescue begins, Roz discovers that there are many secrets on board the train and many passengers with motives for murder. Sounds good, doesn't it? Um, and then I've got... Yeah, this is good. I've got so many good ones. I mean, I don't know when I'm going to get to read all of it. Like, I've got a, some serious reading plans to do. This is The Long Shadow by Celia Fremlin. Welcome to the Nightmare Christmas Holiday. Jolted from sleep by the ringing of the telephone, Imogen stumbles through the dark, empty house to answer it. At first, she can't quite understand the man on the other end of the line. Surely he can't honestly be accusing her of causing, killing her husband, Ivor, who died in a car crash barely two months ago. As the nights draw in, Imogen finds her home filling up with unexpected Christmas guests, who may be looking for some, something more than simple festive cheer. Has someone been rifling through Ivor's paper? Who left the half-drunk whiskey bottle beside his favourite chair? And why won't that man stop calling, insisting he can prove Imogen's guilt? Guilt. Sounds good too, doesn't it? God, oh, so many good ones. Right, the next two are slightly, slightly linked. So you may well know that I've been reading my way through the Cazalet Chronicles um, this year. Um, I read volume one in July and then took August off and then re have read the, the rest of them. So two, three and four in September, October, November. Um, and now I've got volume five, all changed to read. Um, volume five was written a, a number of years after um, oh, I haven't even looked at the family tree yet. A number of years after volume four was written um, and uh, is set e at Christmas in the 1950s over a Christmas. Um, so a lot of my favorite characters that I've got to know and love in the other four are gonna be grown up and are gonna have, their, their lives gonna be 
potentially vastly different from what I've done, but I've had such a lovely, lovely time reading these. So this felt perfect to be reading this um, during Christmas. And David and I are going away for our, um, our anniversary because we've been married one year this December. And like, I've got absolute designs to just be reading this in the bath, um, in front of a crackling fire, uh, where we're going for our honeymoon. So uh, I keep calling it honeymoon, but I do mean anniversary. So yeah, really, really, really looking forward to reading this and really, really, really looking to have forward to having a little peek. Oh, someone's still alive that I wasn't expecting them to be at the uh, at the family tree. Shall I have a peek at it now? I don't want to ruin anything. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Lots has happened. Very excited. Very, very excited indeed. And then also, this is Mistletoe and Malice. And I guess it's slightly linked because it's sort of, um, there's a quote on the front that says, literary comfort and joy, it got me out of mourning for the Cazalets. This is a republished book. This was published um, in the 70s, I think. And this has come back out again. Um, and it sounds as though it, it sounds very similar to that of the Cazalet Chronicles. So the fire is on, sherry poured, claws are being sharpened. In a seaside cottage perched on a cliff, one family reunites for Christmas. While snow falls, a widowed matriarch tyrannically rules over her unruly brood. Her spinster niece tends to her whims but dreams of eloping. And as more guests arrive, each bringing their secret truths and dreams, the Christmas tree explodes, a brawl erupts, a an escape occurs, and their midwinter madness climaxes. Out of print for 70 years, Mistletoe Malice is a glorious lost gem, a darkly witty portrait of a dysfunctional post-war English family's festivities. So yeah, sounds really good. I'm really looking forward to it. I really like... The, um, the front cover and the back cover, which has got a snow globe, which is cracked on it. So yeah, there we go. Uh, and then the last three paperbacks before I move on to cookbook land is um, Jacqueline Wilson's Christmas Cracker, which I bought myself in a supermarket many years ago and haven't got round to reading it. I love Jacqueline Wilson. She was my first sort of like grown up read it, like, like reading more grown up matters like as a child um and i loved bed and breakfast star and tracy beaker uh, double act was another one i really liked um so yeah i've owned this for a few years now and i feel like maybe this year is going to be the year that i'm going to read it so it's not only got stories in there but it's also got puzzles tasty recipes perfect present tips and brilliant stories including starring ja ja uh, starring tracy beaker in which jacqueline's most famous and fierce heroine gets the lead part in the christmas play so yeah tracy hetty and all your other favorite characters for the best christmas ever Sounds good, doesn't it? I'm looking forward to reading that. Uh, then I've got Christmas Island by Natalie Norman. Um, this is, so, so here it says, after all the years of hard work it took London a Holly Green to become a doctor, now it all could be taken away as she only has herself to blame. She's retreating to her brother's rustic home off an island off the coast of Norway. I went to Norway for my honeymoon this year, to lick her wounds. Only it's the middle of winter and icy slush plus endless darkness isn't exactly the cheery festive getaway she had imagined. Endless lust and all oh, darkness sounds good to me. Nearly stumbling off the edge of a cliff in the dark, Holly is saved by Froy, I'm going to say, a yellow-eyed cat of fearsome but fluffy proportions and his owner, grouchy bearded recluse Tor. Tor has his own problems to face, but the inexplicable desire to leave a bag of freshly baked gingerbread men on Holly's doorstep is seriously getting in the way of his hermit routine. Call it kindness, call it Christmas, but Holly's arrival means midwinter has never looked less bleak. So excited. Uh, and then we've got Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa de la Cruz. <laughs> That's right, a Pride and Prejudice retelling from at Christmas. Darcy Fitzwilliam simply doesn't have time to fall in love, but this Christmas, a kiss under the mistletoe will change everything. As a partner at a major New York hedge fund, Darcy's only serious relationship is with her work cell phone. The truth is she's too busy being successful and making money to have time for romance and Christmas cheer. But this year, Darcy is coming home to Pemberley, Ohio for the holidays. There she runs into our old neighbor and high school foe, Luke Bennett, a gender switch as well we see. The oldest of five wayward brothers, when Darcy's enmity with Luke is reopened, along with a hefty dollop of sexual chemistry, will spark are sure to fly. Can Darcy fall in love or will her pride and Luke's prejudice against big city girls stand in her way? <laughs> so those are um, all of the fiction books and then I've just got a little pile of um, Christmas cookbooks that I will be delving in and out of um, throughout the month. So first of all I've got The Little Library Christmas by Kate Young. Um, so this is 50 delicious recipes to take you through the festive season um, and it's inspired by different reads um, that and like recipes that have a, like occurred in in literature and stuff um very very nice there's going to be it's going to lean quite heavily on sort of charles dickens and things like that there's some beautiful food photography in here turkish delight from you know always winter and never christmas narnia uh, almond and pistachio biscotti from the children of green no cranberry cordial 
doesn't say what that's from but yeah a lovely sort of some nice like Christmassy oh god crisp Brussels sprouts yes please very very excited about this so yeah I'm gonna have another and just nice like Christmassy photography and stuff then I've got a book that I got for Christmas last year this is the veggie Christmas cookbook by Heather Thomas David's sister got me this for Christmas last year and I had a little flick for it on Christmas but Christmas, the food was all decided it was Christmas, but there's some really, really nice stuff in here. So like spiced winter roots soup, pumpkin and butter bean soup, lots and lots of vegan stuff in here, um, and lots and lots of vegetarian stuff in here. Butternut squash festive reefs, yes please, be up for that. Um, so I'm gonna be having a look, vegan Christmas pizza reefs, parsnip tart tatan, that looks delicious. So I'm gonna have another look through here and make myself um, some bits in this, and you'll be able to see that in the Friday reading vlogs and in um, the, the the uh the vlogs the festive vlogs that'll be going on as well so that's that um, and then i've got further vegan stuff i've got vegan christmas by gaz oakley this is 70 amazing recipes for the festive season uh this has been out a few years now it's also lovely like sort of celebratory photography and uh just really nice bits so no turkey wrapped in gaz's streaky bright bacon and i'm quite one oh god aubergine platter oh no pigs in blankets really 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 nice i've had this for a few years now and i've made a few things fluffy yorkshire puddings how do they make their yorkshire puddings without eggs soy milk bit of baking powder there we go lovely christmas korma oh my god i want a christmas korma yeah god that looks delicious so that as well uh, and then i've got my trusted jamie oliver's christmas cookbook um if you are a jamie oliver fan like i am you might find this isn't very helpful to you if you own all of the books uh, because this is a lot of um, jamie oliver's christmas recipe sort of collated in one place um so i was always already very familiar with these but it's nice to have them in one place and get them out um and i like to have a little look oh god first of all billionaire shortbread yes please so I need to have a look through that as well um because we're hosting boxing day this year so i need to find some exciting stuff to do um and then advent which david's mum bought me a couple of years ago recipes and crafts for the countdown to christmas david and i made i think we made a chili out of this last year but it's got lots and lots of lovely stuff like knitting projects door wreaths and things like that uh and just really nice things grinch cookies they feel like exciting caramelized turmeric walnuts that sounds nice four tree advent calendar looks lovely lentil shepherd's pie with sweet potato very very nice and then um laura bought me this for my birthday a couple of years ago this is scandinavian christmas over 80 celebratory recipes for the festive season by trina hanman um and this is lots and lots of bacon and stuff but also food and things like that oh i've just seen something that says christmas porridge oh lovely but yeah really 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 nice bits in here beetroot horseradish cured salmon if you're into that christmas danish pastries and it's just very nice Christmassy book. So there we go. All of the books that I plan on reading uh, this month in December. How many will I get them done? I'd like to do one a day between now and, and Christmas Eve. So 24 would be lovely. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so much good stuff to start. I don't know where I'm going to start with. I do know where I'm going to start with it because I always start every year by reading the newest Carol Ann Duffy. So this is what I'll be reading on the first. But uh, where to go to after that? I just don't know. But let me know what you're planning on reading in the month of December. I would love to love to hear um, if you're reading any Christmassy books, if you uh, are reading any of the Christmassy books that I've mentioned. And yeah, I'll see you all again tomorrow um, for another Vlogmas video. Goodbye!